Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And welcome to the Israel of God Bible study class. I'm Brother McKinley. I'll be the teacher for today. As always, it's a pleasure to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day, giving glory and honor to the Most High God. And brothers and sisters, I'd just like to say, many people nowadays, they do things in the name of religion. They have no idea why they do it. They just follow the, the, the populace and never take the time to understand or research or study why they do it. They worship, but they have no idea what or why they are worshiping. And they are being blindly led because they blindly believe what they are being told or what uh, they hear. I always tell people, read, read, study, research, search things out for yourself. I remember when I first come to the Israel of God, Brother Bowie and other brothers, when they would come down, they would encourage us to read for ourselves. They would encourage us. They would even encourage us to go visit other places. And not once did they ever tell us, but don't read this. Don't read that. They encourage us, read everything, study, search it out. And they encourage us to explore, seek out the truth, but with skepticism, with an open mind. Don't just blindly believe what people say. When you read something, when somebody tells you something, find it out for yourself. You know, don't just believe everything because it sounds good. And, and they also encourage us when you read and you start to study and you get a little knowledge and understanding, don't get the big head and start thinking you got more knowledge than anybody else. Because this Bible is for everybody. Anybody can read this Bible. Anybody that can read can read this Bible and get some understanding for themselves. So the knowledge one person has is no more greater than the knowledge another person has. And that applies to everybody, not just the secular religion, because people think we always talk about, quote, unquote, the Sunday churches. This, this applies to everybody. There's people out there. Do, that does things in the name of the Lord that call themselves Hebrews. So we have to be careful. So no matter who it is, who it is, always, always research it and find out for yourself the truth. And I'm saying that because I don't even uh, go on the Internet anymore and search and, 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 and these other things after over 20 years into this, I don't even go because every time I go out, when I used to go out on the internet and search and trying to see who all got this knowledge and everything, every time I come across another group or organization, they always seem to be talking about the Israel of God. They always got something negative to say about the Israel of God, and it's always falsehood. You know, they always talk about uh, Brother Boy tell y'all don't do this. Brother Boy tell y'all don't do that. Or you meet somebody, you tell them I'm with the Israel God. Oh, oh yeah, Brother Boy. Huh? I know Brother Boy. They don't know Brother Boy. They know of him. You know, they, they don't know him. They just know of him. And I'm, and I just want to say, and that, that would discourage me because I always felt like if you got to try and blow my candle out so yours can shine brighter, that's nothing wrong with my candle, something wrong with yours. You know, if your candle's not shining bright, well, whether you blow mine out or not, yours still not going to shine bright. So don't attack me. Figure out why your candle's not shining brighter and illuminate your candle. 
But brothers, we don't try to force this on nobody. If you don't want it, you don't have to take it. It's not our job. The Lord made us free agents. It's not our job to force this on nobody. It's not our job to judge anybody. Our job is to lay it out on the table so you can see it. If you want it, accept it. If not, reject it. That's on you. That's between you and your God. It has nothing to do with us. We just have a job to do. And that job is to try and edify the people and tell them what thus said the Lord so they can decide if they want to follow him or not. Even the Lord say, I lay before you good and evil. He say, choose good and live. But today's lesson, brother and sister, they, they know not what they worship. And this is a lot of people. This is a lot of people. It's just not the secular religious uh, churches. This is everybody. But let's start this in Proverbs, the 14th chapter. 14 and 12. Proverbs 14 and 12. Probably at 14, we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead, brother. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. But there's a way that seemed right unto a man, but the way thereof is death. Because everybody, when they're doing something, oh, they think they're right. Everybody thinks they're right. That's why the Lord said, don't lean on our own understanding. Let the Lord be your guide. Let the Lord word has the final, have the final say so. Because there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. But skip to 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with its own way. But the backslider in heart shall be filled with its own way. The backslider, those that pull, that come to the truth, then they pull away because they get a little knowledge, a little extra knowledge as they want to say, some, or some newfound knowledge, and they want to start pulling away. From this true word of God. So the backslider in heart shall be filled with its own ways. Then they won't start going after their own way. Well, I think this is how this should be done. I think that is, this is how that should be done. But go ahead. A good man shall be satisfied from himself. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. But let's go to, uh, while we're over, let's go to Proverbs 16 chapter. We get people, you know, they go out, they get a little extra knowledge, they, they speak. But they, they, well, they think they speak a little extra language. You know, they, people always come to me, well, you speak Hebrew? No, I say, you speak Hebrew? Yeah, I speak Hebrew. I can say a few words because you, you, have, you have to know Hebrew. I say, why you have to know Hebrew? Let me tell somebody from experience, somebody that's been... Station overseas and thought when I was over in Japan, I learned a few words. But when you're dealing with another language, a few words can get you in a whole lot of trouble. So if you don't speak it fluently, you should just leave it alone because a few words won't get you nowhere. Nowhere at all. And I'm speaking from experience. But Proverbs 16 and 4. Go ahead, brother. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Because the Lord hath made all things for himself, even the wicked, even the languages. Because in Genesis 11, the Lord said, let us go down and confound their language or confuse their language. So everybody speak different so they won't understand each other. The Lord is the one that separated this, this language. And he's the one that gave every nation their own language. So he speaks all language. 
not only the language of man, but animals, fish, birds. He could talk to his whole creation, even the plants. Because when the Lord whispered to the fig tree and told it to dry up, it listened, and it dried up. But go ahead. Where are we? Five. Five. Go ahead. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. So everyone that is proud in heart, everyone that lifts themselves up is an abomination or disgust to the Lord. Go ahead. Though hand join in hand, he should not be in punished. Though hand join, go join in hand, should not go in punished. So don't join hand. Don't just go along with anything. If you do, you're going to be punished. The Lord is going to get you for it. Go ahead. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. But by mercy and truth, sin is purged. And truth is the truth of this word. By mercy and truth. I had a guy say one time, I, I rejoice when I see other things happen to these other nations because what they did to us. I rejoice. That's not of the Lord. The Lord says don't rejoice when your enemy is going through something. That's not mercy. You know better than they are. Go ahead. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So if you don't fear the Lord, you're going to go out there and do whatever you want to do. You're not going to be afraid of the consequences. And that's because you don't know the true and living God. You don't know the God that drowned the whole world and saved only Noah and his family. This God knows how to uh, administer punishment. But skip to 25. 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And there it goes again. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. So people worship stuff. They don't even know what they worship, it, but it seems right because it sounds good. You know that old, old saying, everything that glitter is not gold. It may look good, just like this new tax plan y'all got. It's just a lump of it's just a lump of gold, a lump of coal, gold plated. It looks good. It sounds good, but it's no good for you. And that's coming from someone who's an accountant who does taxes. Uh, but let's go further. Let's go see what, 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 what Jesus said about this, this worship. But let's go to uh, John 4 and 3. And I told the uh, sound room back there, keep their hand on that mute button, because y'all know I say crazy stuff sometimes. So be ready to beat me out. John 4, and we're going to pick it up at 3. This is Jesus. He was talking to the woman at the well. John 4 and 3. Go ahead, brother. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And this is Jesus. He left Judea, departed to Galilee. Go ahead. And he must needs go through Samaria. So he needs to go to through Samaria, because Jesus had to do everything that was prophesied. Go ahead. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, of, of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to a parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Okay, and this is parcel of land that Jacob gave to Joseph. Go ahead. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So Jesus passed by Jacob's well. That's the well that Jacob had had. had Doug, and he, he was tired, so he sat down on the well. Go ahead. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. So the Samaria woman came to draw water. So Jesus said to her, Give me something to drink. Go ahead. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Keep going. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. So this woman said, wait a minute. Why are you, being a Jew, even talking to me? You all don't even deal with any other nations. 
And that's how it was when Jesus came. People, we got to understand when Jesus came, he didn't come. He didn't say he came to save the world. He came to his own. He came to kickstart Israel. Get them back out there to teach these other nations what to do. So, so back then, Israel was still only dealing with Israel. So Jesus, this woman said, hey, you being a Jew, why are you even talking to me? Y'all don't deal with us. Go ahead. 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And Jesus said, if you knew who asked you for a drink, if you knew who I really was, you would ask me for a drink. And I would have gave you living water no matter who you are. I would have given you living water. Go ahead. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From which then hast thou that living water? So you tell, she didn't have any understanding. She didn't know who she was dealing with. So her mind went back to that fleshly thing. You don't, have, you don't even have a bucket. How are you going to draw me some water? No, living water. Go ahead. Uh, read 12. You read 12? Yes, sir. You read it already? No, sir. Go ahead. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Wait a minute. You greater than our father? If her father's Jacob, did she just say, tell Jesus, you a Jew, have, y'all don't have nothing to do with Samaria. Jesus' father was Jacob. So, that, so that's why you got to get some understanding, people. Now, she just told you earlier, she just told Jesus earlier, Jews don't have nothing to do with Samaria. But now she's saying, are you greater than our father, Jacob? So something wrong there. But that's why you got to get some understanding. But that's for another lesson. But to, to make it plain and simple, because when Assyria took over or, or, or captured or conquered the northern kingdom with Samaria, and they came, they started intermingling, and they started marrying Israelite women. So that's why the Samaria, they wasn't real Jews. They wasn't real Jews, but she knew, hey, my mama was a Jew. My mama, Jacob, still our, uh, our uh, uh, grandfather on my mama's side. But that's why you got to get some understanding. But that's, another, that's for another lesson. We got the Black History Series coming up in, 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 in uh, uh, February. Don't miss it. Go ahead. Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children, and his cattle. So she said, our father, Jacob, gave us this well, and he drank there himself. But skip to 19. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Okay, so then Jesus started breaking this thing down to it. That's about her husband. He gave her a little insight that he knew some stuff, asking where her husband was. She said, I don't have no husband. He said, you spoke well. You, you spoke well. He say, uh, 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 you had five husbands, and the one you with now is not your husband. So she perceived this man knows something. He must be a prophet. So she perceived him to be a prophet. Go ahead. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And then she go again. She say, our father worshipped in this mountain. But you say Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place you ought to worship. And there were folks saying that right now today. You have to go back to the to the homeland. You got to go back to Jerusalem. You got to go back and worship in Jerusalem. That's where you have to go. You got to make that pilgrimage. Now, I do tell folks, don't take your butt over there right now. <laughs> Find yourself building that wall, and you'll be on the other side of it. But what did Jesus tell her? Go ahead. 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Oh, so Jesus said, well, the time is coming when you're not going to be in this mountain or in Jerusalem worship, worshiping the Father. Because Jesus knew what was going to happen. He knew 
And he's saying, that time is coming. You won't be in this mouth or in Jerusalem worshiping the, worshiping the Father. And what else did he tell her? Go ahead. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So Jesus said, you worship, but you know not what. And that's what we got to be careful of, people. Make sure we are doing what thus said the Lord. Make sure we know what we're worshiping. And what our worship is is not predicated on, on what man believes, but what on thus said the Lord. And he said, salvation, salvation is of the Jews. And that's another thing people mix up. He said salvation is of the Jews. He, he didn't say salvation is just for the Jews, of the Jews. That means in order to get it, you have to go through Israel. And that's why this thing is so mixed up now, because people try to get around Israel. But let's go to Exodus, the 34th chapter. And Jesus said this because there's no salvation in no other religion. Except this true word of God. Exodus 34, and we're going to pick it up at 10. Let's see what the Lord warned Israel about other nations. And about following other nations. Exodus 4, I mean 34 and 10. Go ahead, brother. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth nor in any nation. So the Lord said, I make an agreement, because that's all the covenant is. He said, I make an agreement before all the people. I, he said, because I want everybody to see this, and I would do marvels and wonders that had never been done before, because he wanted everybody to know that he was the only true and living God, and he was demonstrating that by his works. Go ahead. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. He said, a terrible thing. Go ahead. Observe thou... Observe thou that which I command thee this day. He said, observe thou that that I com command thee this day. Do what I am telling you to do. Go ahead. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. He said, I drive all these other nations out before you. Why? Go ahead. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, Whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. He said, I drive these folks out, or lest they're going to be a snare to you, because they're going to start telling you things that sound good and look good, and you're going to start doing what they do. And that's not what I want you to do. So I'm going to drive these folks out from before you. You do what I tell you to do. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. But ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their groves. And the Lord said, you shall... Destroy their images, their false gods, their, their, their pagan worship, the idols. He say, destroy all that stuff. Destroy it. Get it away from around you. Go ahead. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. He said, you should worship no other god, because the god whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. And he has every right to be jealous. He the one created us. He the one that provides for us. He's the one that makes sure we have everything on this earth that we need to, to sustain ourselves. He did this. Not the sun God, not the moon God, not the monkey God. You know? It's not the sun God that gives you light in the day or the moon God that gives you light at night or the monkey God that throws you bananas when you're hungry. It's the Lord that provides. So he's a jealous God. He don't want you giving his glory to nobody else. Go ahead. 15. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of, the, and thou eat of his sacrifice. He said, unless you go after them and they call you, you eat of their sac sacrifice. You end up doing their practice, their parties, their celebration, and all this other foolishness that they get into and fall into. So you start, so you start being like them. Go ahead. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. And you start marrying their daughters and, 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 and sons and giving your children to, you start intermingling, and then all this stuff get all messed up. That's what got Solomon messed up. 
all them wives and concubines he had. He started building groves and altars to their gods. And that's what got him messed up. But go ahead. Thou shalt make thee no molten God. He said, Thou shalt make thee no molten God. Because he didn't want you giving his honor to nobody else. That's why God didn't even show his similitude to the, he didn't even let the Israel see how he, how he looked. Even Moses, he just let Moses see his backside. Because he know how this man is. He know how we are. But uh, let's go a little farther. Let's go to Psalm 95. Go over to Psalm 95 and 1. Psalm 95 and 1. Ninety-five and one. And we're gonna see why you get praise to the Lord only, and nobody else. Especially this time of year, this is the season. You know, the Lord provide for you all year long. Three hundred sixty-four days a year, making sure you got a job, you got food on the table. You got utilities, you warm in the summer, I mean, you, you, you warm in the uh, uh, winter, you cool in the summer, you got transportation, you got gas to, to get back and forth to work. Then that one day of the year, you give his glory to some other guy, some fat guy in a sleigh with tiny reindeers. And you tell your kids, he made this possible. This is why you got these toys, because Santa brought them. And you don't work triple time trying to catch up on the bills. What kind of sense that made? The Lord said, don't give his glory to nobody else. Psalms uh, 95 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. He said, let us sing a, 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 a Joy, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. But Israel forgot who that rock was that led them, that rock that take care of them all year. They done completely forgot about it. Go ahead. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with song. He said, let us come from and before him and with for his presence with thanksgiving because he's the one that provided for us. And a joyful noise unto him with psalms. The Lord say, sing unto him, sing praises unto him. Not to somebody else. You know, you riding down the street, turn on the radio. Sons, come on. You turn it to another station. Sons, come on. On this station, silent night, holy night. Turn the station. Chestnut roasting on the open fire. Tell you, keep messing around with that stuff. Your chestnuts gonna be roasting in the lake of fire. <laughs> but get some understanding. Know what it is you're doing. Go ahead. Three. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Now he's a great, a, a, a great God and a great King above all. The Lord is above all these other pagan gods. Cause he's, all these other pagan gods is nothing. There's nothing before him. Go uh, right over to Psalm 96. Keep on going to 96 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Go ahead. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. So if you want to sing, sing unto the Lord. How would songs of praise and psalms and thank him daily for his salvation. He didn't have to wake us up, but he did. He don't have to make sure you got a job, make sure we take care of, but he does. Go ahead. Declare his glory among the heathen. Declare his glory among the heathen. De declare his glory among the, the non-believers, those that, that don't know this God. 
Let them know that they're in this situation because of the true and living God. That's why they blessed. That's who did it for them. Go ahead, brother. His wonders among all people. And his wonders among all people. Go ahead. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. And like the song said, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Go ahead. He is to be feared above all God. And he is to be feared above all God because he's the only God. The only God that can do something to you if you don't obey him. These other gods, these gods are stone and wood. You don't have to fit them. You can go smack them. They fall over. They can't do nothing. And they can't do nothing for you. If you were to fall, you better help. hope you had one of them little alert bracelets. So you can call 911 because calling that pagan god ain't going to do nothing for you. You stumble and fall, accidentally grab it, they fall with you. You both down there. Well, at least we got each other for company. But where are we, brother? We're at five. We're at five. Go ahead. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Because all the gods of the other nations are idols. So why would you follow traditions of other nations when everything they do it's to idols, false god, pagan god. But let's go to Psalm 17. And the book of people say, well, you know, all that stuff is just tradition. Ain't no harm in it. What can it, it, what can it do? It ain't no harm. It's just, we just following tradition. Deuteronomy 17, what did I say? See, the, even, the, even the congregation said I said Deuteronomy. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I heard. But no, Deuteronomy 17 and 1. Deuteronomy 17 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or, or any evil favoredness. So he said, don't sacrifice unto the Lord anything. But give the Lord your best. Show the Lord that you truly appreciate his mercy and his kindness, what he's done for you. Give him your best. And he said, and, 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 or any evil favoredness, don't bring that to the Lord. If you don't go out and rob a bank and talk about, well, Lord, let me give away with it. Let me give him his temperance. Don't bring that up in here. You know, you can't, you can't purify it by putting the Lord's name on it. Oh, the Lord just blessed me with this good lick. Let me give him his part. The Lord don't want that. He didn't tell you to go out and do it. Go ahead, brother. For that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. He said, that's an abomination to him. Go ahead. If there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant. He said, if there be anybody among you, that it, that it brought wickedness in the sight of the Lord and broke his covenant, went against his word, go ahead. And hath gone and served other gods. And hath gone and served other gods, go ahead. And worshiped them. Go ahead. Either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. He's saying worship them, the sun or the moon or the stars or any other host of heaven, all the different other planets. He say, which I have not commanded, go ahead. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently. He said, you heard about it. It's been told you. And you searched it out. Let the Lord know you can't just take people's word for things. Investigate it. He said, if you have heard it and somebody told it to you. And you have inquired diligently. And diligently means give it every effort. 
to make sure it's true. Don't just say, you know, bro, bro, so-and-so says something, so-and-so. Is that true, Devin? Yeah. Okay, it's true. No, you search it out. You search it out. Go ahead. And behold, it be true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. And if it be true, what? Go ahead. Then thou shalt bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman. And she'll stone them with stones till they die. Okay, and he said, you find out, and this was back in the day. When Israel was, Israel was going through the wilderness, the Lord was, Lord, Lord was purging them. The Lord said, if they do this thing and it be found out that it's true, they went worship other gods, take them out. He said at night, take them outside the gate and stone them. In other words, he wants them to plunge you with big rocks. Until you're not breathing no more. That's just how serious this thing is to the Lord. But back up to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, 4 and 12. Deuteronomy 4 and 12. Deuteronomy 4 and 12. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. And it's the Lord speaking to Israel. He's speaking out of the midst of the fire. Because you know he had them by fire by night and by pillar of clouds in the day. But he spoke to them out of the midst of the fire. What did he say? Go ahead. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. So you, saw the vo you, you heard the voice, but you didn't see no similitude. You didn't see his image. You didn't see his shape, his form, nothing. Because the Lord did not want Israel to see him. Because he know this man is visual. He know if they had a son, first thing they would have did, went and made a little statue of him. And then they would have got all confused, and, and instead of worshiping the creator, they would have started worshiping that statue. So he didn't show no similitude. He didn't want them to see how he looked at all. Go ahead. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And he, and, he com and, and, and he wrote the Ten Commandments on tables of stone. He told you to do them. That's what he told you to do, but go ahead. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. And the Lord told Moses to teach the, the people these statutes and these commands. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what we do. We teach. We try to teach what thus said the Lord. The bottom line, this whole thing, every Sabbath we come in here, all we should be teaching is how to get salvation. This is how you get salvation. This is what you got to do to get into the kingdom. This is what is expected of you if you want to live forever. But we have to teach all this other stuff to deprogram because we are so, we are so far out there we got to teach all this other stuff to deprogram ourselves. But basically, all we should be teaching every Sabbath, just reiterating, just stressing the point, do what does say, Lord. Keep the commandment. This is what you do. This is what the Lord don't want you to do. That's all we should be teaching every Sabbath, how to get salvation. But it's not that simple. Go ahead. 15. Take it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. So the Lord said, he didn't show you no figure of himself because he knew you would end up corrupting yourself. We're making little statutes. Go ahead. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth upon the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And that's exactly what the man had done. They make all kinds of statues of things and want to worship them. Go ahead. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all the nations under the whole heaven. And the Lord says he don't want you to worship all this other 
other stuff. These moon and sun and stars and all these different animals. So he said he didn't show no similitude because he knew. He knew this man. He knew exactly what this man would do. But let's go to Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Leviticus 20 and 1. But I hear y'all church, y'all be telling people not to do this and not to do that. Y'all tell people don't do Christmas. I say, I don't tell nobody not to do anything. I, I can't tell you what to do in your house. That's your house. I'm not, I don't pay any bills there, nor am I going to pay any bills there. So you do what you want to do in your house. If I come to your house and you got a Christmas tree so tall, it don't even fit in the house, it's bent over. The star is touching the floor. And so why you got to go around it like this? And if I come over to do something, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come in. I'm going to go around the tree just like this. I ain't say nothing to you. Do what I got to do and leave. I'm not going to call nobody. I went over so and so house. They had a big old tree. It's not my business. That's your house. You do what you want to do. We just lay it out on the table and let you decide what you want to do with it. But go ahead, brother, Leviticus 20 and 1. The people are like, well, you know, they, we, you know, we do this for the children. Don't take this away from the children. You know, this holiday, this Christmas, don't take it away from the children. This Easter, don't take it away from the children. And like I said, we just lay it out there. Because all you're doing is with your child is perpetrating Falsehood, telling your child that a reindeer can fly, that a rabbit deliver eggs. You know, it's not even helping. It's not even helping the child. But uh, Leviticus 20 and 1, go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and It's the Lord speaking, go ahead. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel. So if it's the children of Israel or a stranger, whoever in the midst of Israel, go ahead. That giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he should, he should surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stone. So you teaching your church, this children this stuff. You teaching them this stuff. All you're doing, you're sacrificing them to pagan gods by having them indulge in these mm. Rituals. And all, I'm, then all you have to do is just research the background and see what they're about. See if it's about Jesus. See if it's about the birth of Christ. Check out his origin. And see what you really have in your child. Participate in. When I first come into Israel over 20 years ago, we, we had little children. We had kids. You know, they love Christmas. But we found out that to the child, the child didn't care if they got a present on December 25th or June 25th. They didn't care if they had a a white Christmas or a sunny Christmas. They didn't care. And they didn't care when they got out of, out of school, as long as they was out. They didn't care what it was for. So it wasn't for the kids. You know, they eat candy and cake and, and get that new outfit, that new frock anytime. So it's not for the kids. 
That's just an excuse we used to say. But the Lord said, don't do that. Don't sacrifice your kids to these things. We thought we teaching our children better. We thought we teaching them better. But let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32 and 16. I know Israel, we hard-headed, we stiff-necked. Uh, go ahead, brother. They, re- they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. And that's what we're doing. We're provoking the Lord to jealousy and to anger by doing what he tell us, told us not to do. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. And they they were sacrificing unto devils and not to God. They were sacrificing unto these idol gods that the other nations, like the other nations was doing. Go ahead. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. They knew gods that came newly up that their fathers knew not. Because the fathers, what they weren't doing it. The Lord told them that he's the true and living God, and, and he's the one that they should worship. But go ahead. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. Yeah, the rock that begat thee, the rock that formed thee, they were unmindful. They forgot all about him. Go ahead. And has forgotten God that formed thee. And forgotten God that formed thee. He's forgotten the God that, that took the pile of, of mud and made Adam. Forgot all about him. And these other gods weren't nowhere around when this happened. Go ahead. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And the Lord was, was angry. Because the provoking of his sons and his daughter, getting them to do these things, follow these, these pagan traditions. Go ahead. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. The Lord said, I will hide my face from them. I will hide my faith from them. They will look for me. I won't, they won't even see me. Go ahead. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. He said, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Go ahead. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. He said, I provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And a foolish nation have foolish practices. So all this stuff that these other nations are doing that, that we be following is foolishness. And it, it provoked the Lord to anger. He hates that, that mess. Go ahead. For a fire is kindled in mine anger. He said, a fire is kindled in my anger. Go ahead. And shall burn unto the lowest hell. He said, and burn unto the Lord's hell for, for all this foolishness that, that we just started doing. Go ahead. And shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundation of the mountains. He said, and he shall set on fire the foundation of the mountains. That's how much the Lord hates this stuff. That's how much he's against this. He said, he's angry and a fire's kindled and his wrath is coming there ain't no way around it there ain't no way around it but let's go to Jeremiah 10th chapter because people say well you know it's just a tree ain't no harm in that Jeremiah 10 we're going to pick it up at 1 People say, well, you know, this is the joyous time of year. But this time of year, crime goes up. Houses burn down at record num- number. All kinds of stuff goes on at this joyous time of a year. Uh, Jeremiah 10 and 1. Ten and one. Go ahead, brother. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. He said, hear, this, hear the word, Jeremiah said, hear the word that the Lord speak unto you, O house of Israel. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. He said, don't learn the ways of the heathen. Don't do like the heathen. He's already said that, that they worship devils. 
So why would you do like them? Go ahead. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. He said, don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. You got some knowledge and understanding. You shouldn't be amazed 